Shalom Israel, Shalom. It's your brother Gabriel coming to you with another video, um, an exhortation video. Lord willing, this video is edifying to the hopeful elect of Israel. Shalom to all of the brothers and the Akiim out there on the highways and by byways, making their bodies a living sacrifices and pushing his truth. Shalom to all of the Akwath out there referencing their husbands, doing what they have to do to take care of the household. Shalom to all of the mighty children out there who are uh, abstaining from the lust of this world and um, keeping the law and doing what they have to do um, as, as, as young children in this thing and you know honoring their mother and father as the law says to do so. Right? Um, man, it's like the third time I'm making this video. I was just in the middle of recording it, man, and somebody want to damn call me right um so that stopped the recording um then last week um i'm and i actually tried to upload this same video last week um so i'm actually remaking it because for some reason every time i tried to upload it to youtube the video would not upload with sound so lord willing man i got my phone on do not disturb lord willing we can get through this thing um, this video will upload with no problems and you know I can we can put this truth out there and put this warning out there right first off I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and uh, let's get into it so look man this is this is uh, I'm gonna go through this Department of Homeland Security document or article and uh, I got another document that I want to go through I'm um, talking about um, ethnic cleansing right and uh, this is basically, man, this is basically a warning, as we already know, because we've been prophesying about Jacob's trouble and what could happen during Jacob's trouble, man, how, you know, Esau is going to unleash, you know, the most, um, the most evil that they possibly can on Jake in these times, right? So I am, you know, making a video kind of, laying out some of Esau's plans because they put it out there and you know Lord willing you know some of the brothers and the sisters the elect of Israel who see this video they will you know be more spiritually prepared in those days when they do come right so let's read this this first article man this is the summary of terrorism the summary of terrorism threat to the United States Right, and it says the United States remains in a heightened threat environment as noted in the previous bulletin. And several recent attacks have highlighted the dynamic and complex nature of the threat environment. In the coming months, we expect, so they know the say that they know something's gonna happen. Right? Somebody's either planning something that they don't plan on stopping, or you know, they, they just know. It says we expect the threat environment to become more dynamic as several high profile events could be exploited to justify acts of violence against a range of possible targets. Don't know what these high profile events are gonna be, right? It says these targets could include public gatherings, faith-based institutions, schools, racial and religious minorities, government facilities and personnel, US critical infrastructure, the media, and perceived ideological opponents. Threat actors have recently mobilized to violence due to factors such as personal grievances, reactions to current events and adherence to violent extremist ideologies, including racially or ethnically motivated or anti-government, anti-authority, violent extremism. We're actually gonna get into that in this next document, right? It says foreign adversaries, including terrorist organizations and nation state adversaries also remain intent on exploiting the threat environment to promote or inspire violence, sow discord, or undermine U.S. democratic institutions. We continue to assess that the primary threat of mass casualty violence in the United States stems from lone offenders and small groups motivated by a range of ideological beliefs and or personal grievances, right? So I'm not going to go through this whole article, but what they're really talking about, man, and, and, and what this last sentence, man, was a half-truth um, because... Most of these people, man, they're not alone. They're part of some white... Most of these Edomites who are carrying out these white supremacist attacks, man, most of them are a part of some type of group. They belong to some forum like 4chan or Reddit where they talk about doing these things against 
um, the Israelites, who the world calls, you know, so-called black people. Um, and, you know, they they got these things planned out and they're somewhat open about it, man. As we're going to go into this document, um, and we're going to see what they got planned out, man. So, you know, let's go ahead and get into it, matter of fact. Right. So look at this. This is a document called FM6-2003 Ethnic Cleansing Operations. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this, the link to this document in the description of this video. But look, this is basically a document on how Esau wants to get rid of Jake. Right? This is how Esau is planning to get rid of of all of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans across the country. So let's go ahead and get into this document, right? Let's go to chapter one. Actually, let me look and see. I'm gonna go through chapter one. I'm gonna probably go through the scrub brushes of ethnic cleansing, right, to show you what they plan on how they plan on using, uh, what weapons they plan on using. We we all know that Esau's gift is the sword, so they're planning on using a gun. And uh, we're probably going to go through Operation Blackout. Now, I'm going to put the link to this document in the description of this video, and you all can check it out for yourself. So I'm just going to briefly go through this thing. Right. So look, it says, why ethnic cleansing? And, it, and as we see, it's a bunch of dead... I don't know if those are Hamites, uh, you know, so-called Africans or not. Um, it says unknown Hutu warrior, right? But uh, you see at the top, it says the problem was that we cannot separate the good Tutsis from the bad ones. Plus, each good Tutsi carried the seeds of the next bad one, right? So they, eh, they really looking at this thing like, man, you know, ain't no such thing as a good so-called black person they really want to get rid of the israelites right especially here in america but let's read this thing it says the decision to ethnically cleanse this country is a very serious one it has come as the result of skyrocketing crime rates by people of color against whites now i don't know what the hell they're talking about people of color against whites last time i've seen man jake is more prone to bug up against jake especially when the israelites are out there preaching and teaching they're more prone to bug up against us, threaten us with violence, and they don't want to do nothing against, you know what I'm saying, Esau and uh, the Edomites. Whenever they cut 10 jakes down in the grocery store in your own neighborhood, they want to bug up against us and not, and, and not the ones who did it, right? And it says, but this is hardly the only reason. A white person only has to take a ride downtown on a city bus to see that racial tensions are increasing. I once asked a few black men why blacks seem to zero in on whites so much. See, they're talking about Jake. Their candid response is worth repeating. Their fellow blacks were merely hunting and gathering. Now, they know this a damn lie. They know ain't no Jakes from the hood talking about no damn hunting and gathering. They know this is a, this is a damn lie that they speaking right now. And this is what Esau does, man. Esau is a, just a damn liar, right? They come up with these things knowing I ain't never heard of Jake from the city, from the hood, talk about some man. We we, we, we hunting and gathering. What the hell are you talking about? Jake don't know the first thing about hunting, right? And it said they went on to explain that before the, the evil white man had bought them as slaves, they had hunted and gathered in Africa. First off, Jake don't know what the hell they was doing in Africa. You ask Jake, we on the highways and byways every weekend, every Sabbath day. And we ask Jake, you know, do you know where we come from? What's your heritage? What were we doing before we, we were put on these slave ships? Jake say, I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. You know what I'm saying? So you know this ain't no damn answer that Jake gave, man. He's also a fucking liar. And it says that those old jungle instincts are still very close to the surface today. And this is, uh, 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 this is just low-key disrespect saying that we're damn primitive, right? When Esau, you're the ones that's fucking primitive. 
You know what I'm saying? You 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 damn Edomites, man. You so damn primitive. You you motherfuckers eat raw meat. You and and Salaki, if children are watching this, man. But I I, I can't help myself right now. You you Edomites, you Edomites, you eat damn raw meat, man. You eat raw meat. So what you talking about? We we we're the uh, the hunters and the gappers, man. Stop it. And it says and that those old jungle in, it, talking about we got jungle instincts. And it says it is a scary sight or scary thought to know that we are in the minds of most blacks merely fruit on the trees waiting to be picked and eaten. And it's a lie with black. Jake ain't thinking about Esau. If Jake was thinking about Esau and what Esau was trying to do, man, we would be in a way better position. But Jake ain't thinking a damn thing about Esau. So, so we just see, we just see how much Esau loves to lie. And Esau loves to stretch the narrative and twist it to their own wicked story so they can justify their own evil and what they want to do, right? And this is just, Esau's just twisting this story and twisting this narrative simply because they want to exterminate Jake. They want to exterminate all of the Israelites from America. And that's what this document is for, right? So y'all can read the rest of that. Let's go. Let's go and look at the scrub brushes. Let's go to that chapter. Right? And they're talking about the Civil War. So look, here. The scrub brushes of ethnic cleansing. And you see they got a, uh, what's that, an M16, I think, or something like that. I'm, I ain't too fond of guns, so I don't really know. And it says, personal weapons must be compact and robust. With, high rate, with a high rate of fire and very lightweight ammunition, but there is also a place for shotgun-like weapons at the squad level. Overall, soldier loads must be reduced dramatically at the edge of combat, since fighting in tall buildings requires agility that a soldier unbalanced by heavy pack cannot attain. Further, vertical fighting is utterly exhausting and requires specialized mobility tools. Soldiers will need more upper body strength and will generally need to be more fit. And this includes support soldiers as well, right? So they, they got this whole thing planned out, right? And you see they got all of the guns, all of the rifles. You know what I'm saying? The AR-15. They got a, what's this, a M1A shotgun. I don't know what that is. Um, more, just more rifles and shotguns and handguns. And this is Esau's gifts. Esau was blessed with the sword. You know what I'm saying? That's what... That's what uh, Esau's blessing was from Isaac. Esau was blessed with the sword, man. And we see this right here. Esau is caught up with their guns, man. You know what I'm saying? But hey, Lord willing, hey, the, those who know this truth, the elect of Israel, man, we'll be delivered from this, from these, from from from, from these days, right? And then we're gonna have our get back when Yahweh Shah comes back to save us, right? We gonna get our get back. You feel me, right? Especially in uh, 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 and the Lord is gonna get his get back with the missiles. The Lord is gonna get his get back with them ICBM thermonuclear missiles, right? So let's skip down a little bit. So look, they got tanks, armored vehicles. They got all type of shit, man. All type of stuff, right? It's another little section. Because it's a car, you ain't safe either. Right, it says, who will fight? How to. Right, see, they got maps. So look, they got Hispanic origin persons. They got maps of all of the Hispanics. You know what I'm saying? Where most of the Hispanics are. They got maps of where all the uh, uh, of the Judites are and the so-called black folks are. They got this thing planned out. So yeah, it's a car. You ain't safe either. It's a car. Simeon, um, um, Manessa, Ephraim. Ain't none of y'all safe either. All Jakes are in danger of this, man. Right? And it says Operation Blackout, right? And it says, it was always understood that there was no way we were going to be able to stop Serb paramilitary forces who were going in and murdering civilian villages, right? So 
It says, look, phase one, get them moving. Commanders will have researched the locations of military storage facilities in their area and along their routes. Intelligence specialists are to debrief military defectors for current locations of weapons, storage areas, as soon as they arrive. Utilize psychological warfare in every facet of the offensive. Start rumors, right? Start rumors. So this is what Esau is going to be doing. Esau is going to be starting rumors and, and saying things, trying to deceive Jake, right? He says start rumors by patching into phone lines and interrupting ongoing calls. Let listeners believe they are hearing someone else's conversation and plant the information you want spread spread around. Allow one hour for the rumor to circulate and then knock out all the telephone lines and cell phone towers all along the way. Psychological warfare units will encourage locals to take matters into their own hands. Spread leaflets ahead of your advance, offering rewards for locations of hiding blacks and those handing them over to your forces. Also, put the word out that whites who hide or give aid to comfort blacks will be executed. Follow through on your warning when such cases are discovered. Man, so this is Esau got this thing planned out. Esau is not playing. Esau has a, 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 a straight military strategy on how to get rid of Drake. And this is going to happen in Jacob's trouble, right? They're just waiting on the right time to implement this thing, right? Because they can't, they, 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 right now is not the right time. They can't do it, right? It's too much media attention. It's too much, it's too many eyes watching, right? And they wouldn't be able to successfully do it. But when shit hit the fan, when things begin to happen, when the lights go out, when famine starts to hit, when food prices go up, and when insurrections begin to happen, right? The famine of the word has come. This is when these things are going to begin, right? When the prophets are off of the streets and we can't make videos anymore, we can't go out there on the highways and byways anymore. This is when this stuff is going to happen. When them rolling blackouts hit, this is when this stuff is going to happen. Right? So, it, 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 so Lord willing, man, we can get Jake, you know what I'm saying? Jake, all of the elect of Israel, spiritually ready for this thing, right? Because our weapons are not carnal. Our weapons are spiritual, right? And faith and fear and trust in our Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. Man, in these days, is going to deliver us, right? So let's go ahead and get into the scriptures, right? Enough of these, enough of Esau's antics and his plans, right? Let's go ahead and get into these scriptures, right? So let's go to Zechariah 13 and 8. And it says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein, right? Two parts of our people are going to be cut off and die. And this is how it's going to happen. It's going to happen by way of ethnic cleansing, right? It's going to happen by way of Jacob's trouble. Two thirds of our people are going to be put to death, right? And it says, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my power, right? So these, this is what, what what's going to happen, man. Two-thirds of our people who don't repent, who scoff at the prophets, they talk about the white man is, is the one who wrote the Bible, right? All of those two-third jakes, man, they're going to be put to death in these days, and that's how they're going to be put to death via the FM6 2003 ethnic cleansing operations man aka jacob's trouble and the one third is going to be brought through the fire tried as gold and refined as silver is refined as it says in the scriptures right and when we call on the name of the lord yahweh by hashem yahweh shah the lord is going to hear us and the lord is going to deliver us man so let's go ahead and get into these scriptures man of of deliverance man let's go to first peter chapter one verse seven and it says, the trial of your faith, uh, Salagia, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious 
than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Right? So our faith is going to be tried in these days. Our faith is going to be tried in the fire, just as gold is tried. You know what I'm saying? But uh, uh, our faith is more precious than gold because gold will perish, right? But the Lord is going to try us to, 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 to remove, you know, all of the impurities, all of the impurities that we have right now, all of the things that we're dealing with right now, man, the Lord is going to remove those things from us via these, these days of trial, man. These days of tests and trials and tribulations. Right, so let's go to Psalms 9 and 13. And it says, Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. And we see these Edomites, they hate us. They hate Jake. Right? It, you you, you got to really hate somebody to create an entire detailed, planned out military operation on how to exterminate an entire group of people. That's hatred. That is hatred, right? And it says, thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, right? And this is who we're, we're going to rely on the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, to lift us from the gates of death, right? And it says that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. When the Lord saves us, man, we're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice in salvation. You know what I'm saying? Well, we got to rely on Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. We got to have faith in Yahweh Shah. We got to show and, and rely and trust in the Lord Yahweh so that, man, we can, we can be worthy of salvation. We can be worthy of being saved in these last days. So let's go to Psalms 55 and 22. It says, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Right? But thou, O God, or O Yahweh, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. And we see that these are bloody and deceit. Esau is a bloody and deceitful man. Right? Esau is bloody and deceitful. This document, the FM6 2003 document, is bloody and deceitful, right? So it's like, man, we got to rely on Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai to deliver us in those days, right? Let's go to an example of somebody who was delivered by Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. Let's go to let's go to the uh, story of Hezekiah. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 18. Starting at verse 29 Right and it says thus saith the king And this is the king of Assyria Talking to the people of Israel um, You know talking prideful Talking haughty You know what I'm saying being arrogant against the children of Israel It says thus saith the king The king of Assyria Let not Hezekiah deceive you For he shall not be able to Deliver you out of his hand Right Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me, buy a present, and come out to me, and then eat ye every man of his own vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his cistern. Now Esau is not offering this to us. Esau just wants to put us to death, right? This is not Esau is not putting this in there, right? And it says, "Until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil, olive and honey, that ye may live and not die, and hearken not unto Hezekiah, when he persuadeth you, saying, The Lord will deliver us." Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and of Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim, Henna, and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of mine hand? Who are they among all gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of mine hand? 
that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand, right? And this is where we're going to go see what Hezekiah did, right? As it said in Psalms 55 and 22, man, Hezekiah laid his burdens on the Lord, just as it says in that scripture, right? So let's skip to 2 Kings 19 and 14, man. And it says, and Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Right. He laid out his burdens before Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, power of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the most high, even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see and hear the words of Sennacherib, which have sent him to reproach the living most high. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations of their lands. And he's saying, Lord, this is true. The kings of Assyria have destroyed all of the nations that they came against. No one has been able to successfully fight against them, right? And have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord, our power, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know thou art the Lord, Yahweh, even thou only. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh of Israel. That which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, I have heard, right? So the Lord heard Hezekiah's prayers. Just as it said um, in Psalm 55 and 22, the Lord is going to hear you. You feel me? So let's go to skip up to verse 32 and see what happened to the kings of Assyria, right? And it says, Thus saith, for therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into his city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out. And smote the camp of Assyria a hundred four score and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So the Lord sent an angel of death into that camp of Assyria and killed all their soldiers. Right? And this is the power. This is a miracles, man, that the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is gonna do for our people in these days and is gonna do for the elect in the days of J uh, in the days of Jacob's trouble. Right? And this is what's going to happen when we call on the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. This is what's going to happen, man. We're going to see angels of death smite Esau and destroy Esau, right? So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he worshipped in the house of Nisroch, his god, that Adremelech and Sherezer, his son, smote him with the sword. And they escaped into the land of Armenia. And Esharhadon, 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 his son reigned in his steed, right? So the Lord came through for Hezekiah and the people of Israel, or the children of Judah. The Lord came through. And the Lord destroyed the Assyrian soldiers. And the Lord is going to do, same, do the same thing for his elect in these days, man. When we call upon the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Right? Let me go to Psalms 84, verse 2. It says, My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for my courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living power. Salakia 84. Hold on. 
Man, I must not have, uh, must not have got the right one. I thought it was 84 and 2. It was it 84 and 3? Salakia. It's like it. Look, I'm gonna go ahead and go to uh, second edges. Chapter 16, 74. Right, and it says, Hear, hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same, right? The Lord will deliver us from the days of trouble, just like he delivered Hezekiah, just like he delivered Paul, just like he delivered the, uh, all of the other men of the Lord and the prophets, right? The Lord is going to do these things, right? Because look, let's go down to 16 and 17. Because this is Esdras, Esdras seeing these things playing out. This is Esdras seeing FM 6-2003 play out in the land here in Babylon, right? And he says, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days, right? Because these days that are coming up on the earth, man, they're going to be very uh, uh, extreme. They're going to be very dire, man. They're going to be very troubling, right? You know, let's go to 67, right? And it says, behold, Yahweh himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall Yahweh lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble, right? So we got to leave off from our sins and forget our iniquities, right? And we got to trust, keep these laws, statutes, and commandments, trust in Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shah, and the Lord is going to deliver us in these days, man, right? We go to Sirach 33 and 1. Right, and it says, there shall no evil happen unto him that feareth the Lord. But in temptation, even again, he will deliver him. A wise man hateth not the law, but he that is a hypocrite therein is a ship in a storm, right? So the Lord is going to deliver those who trust in the Lord and fear the Lord and fear Yahweh Bosh and Yahweh Shai. The Lord is going to deliver those in those days, man. And the Lord is going to keep us. And the Lord is going to make sure that his elect is saved out of um out of the, out of Jacob's trouble. Right? So let me give you this closing scripture, man. Let me give you the classic. Sirach chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. It says, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of affliction. Right? Has there ever been a time that the anybody who trusted in the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, and was confounded or was forsaken? La, -ah. you can't find no account of that in the Bible, nowhere, or in the apocrypha. All of those men and all of those people um, who trusted in the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, they were saved out of, um, you know, they were saved out of these things, you know. Let's look at, uh, 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 um, I believe, what, what, what was it, Judith? When, um, when, the, when, the, when the two men, the two old creeps, two old perverts came against her, and, and, and tried to com uh, first her, uh, to commit adultery, man. And, and, and the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah sent Daniel to uh, to testify for uh, on her behalf, right? So, man, this is what the Lord will do for us in these days of trouble when we trust and fear in the Lord, right? This goes the same for the Akim, just as the Aqua, right? Those who trust and fear the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah in these days of Jacob's trouble. Are gonna be saved, and they're gonna be brought, um, brought and delivered 
out of uh, out of out of, out of trouble, out of Jacob's trouble, man. So look, with that, I'm gonna close out. Uh, just want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Shalom.